Hey guys, this is Matt Core from controlpaint.com, and today I'm going to talk about correcting your values in big strokes. And we're going to be using something called an adjustment layer to do that. So in this drawing that I started yesterday, you can see that I've got some value problems. Specifically, in the reference here, there's a lot of high bright values in the lobe of the ear. And mine doesn't really have that as much. Also, just overall, mine is not quite the same value arrangement. Mine's a bit more mid-tone, when the one on the left is a bit more high key, or brightly lit. So to fix that, I'm going to try using an adjustment layer. And I'm going to show you what that looks like in a different document first. So here if I just made a duplicate of this layer, which has a checkerboard on it, I could use the levels command and control the contrast. So this is probably old hat to most of you. So that increases or decreases the contrast, depending on how you use it. But once I hit OK, that's destructive, which is to say I can't modify it later. So an easier way to do that that is less damaging to your art is to add an adjustment layer. And I'll use the one called Levels, although there's plenty of other ones. So this looks pretty much the same as the Levels dialog, but it is going to stick around and be non-destructive. So here you can see I have the contrast applied, and then I'll close the window. Now if you look at the Layers panel, there's a different type of thumbnail here, and this is the adjustment layer. And if I hide it, you can see the contrast goes away. And where it sits in the layer stack matters. So if I were to paint on top, and then hide it, that stroke would not be affected. An adjustment layer only affects those things which are below it. Now the really powerful part about an adjustment layer is that it, by default, has a mask. So if I select the mask thumbnail, which is to the right of the adjustment layer thumbnail, I can paint with brushes and hide away part of that effect. I can choose where on my layer is going to be affected by the levels command. All right, now let's see how this works in my illustration. So I'm going to create a levels adjustment layer and I'm going to tweak the contrast to make it look a little bit more like the reference. And as I do this, you see I'm losing my shadows a bit, but that's okay because I'm going to remove that from the effect. So this has given me the overall brightness boost that I was looking for. So I'll hide this away. But now to get my shadows back, I will mask out part of that effect. So just to recap, if I were to mask out the top half, this is what it would look like. So you can see the bottom half has the extra brightness and the top half is unaffected. I'm going to put it back to normal. So the areas that I don't want to affect with this change are the darkest shadows. So I'll paint with black in my thumbnail mask where the darkest shadows should remain because I liked the way those shadows looked before. So there are a couple areas here where I really want to retain those shadows. But by and large, I like the way that the adjustment layer has affected the rest of my value structure. And maybe the area to the left of the ear could use a little bit of darker shadow too. So I'll hide this and show you what the difference is. This is before the adjustment layer, and this is after the adjustment layer. And even though I made tons of brush strokes, I can still throw this away at any time. I don't have to undo 15 or 20 times because it is non-destructive. But if you look at the list of available adjustment layers, you've got all sorts of choices. For instance, if you look at the list of available adjustment layers, you've got all sorts of choices. For instance, Photo Filter is a nice way to add a bit of a color cast. And there's a bunch of different photo filters, and you can adjust their intensity. And once again, mask away where you don't want the effect. So if I paint in black on the mask thumbnail, I can remove some of that color from the shadows. And what separates this from a simple color layer is that I can double click on the effect itself and change any of its initial properties. So if instead of this being a warming filter, I wanted it to be deep red, all that is is one click. 
If you want to make large scale changes to your image, or maybe test out how your image might look if it were high contrast or if it were colorized, adjustment layers are a great way to find out. Because ultimately, you can hide them away and they're totally non-destructive. You haven't messed up the rest of your painting at all. Now hopefully this bit about masking didn't go over your head, but if it did, I've got a couple other videos about how to make and use masks, and I'll link them at the bottom of the post. So thanks for watching, guys.